one of my favorite organizations that I just think does tremendous work on a shoestring budget is Epic Change. And we talk a lot about them in the book, and I know you know Stacey really well. And we always get, you know, we always get asked questions, well, that's great that National Wildlife Federation and the Humane Society are doing these wonderful things, and they're the rock stars in the space. But at the end of the day, they have a pretty large budget. They're really large organizations. And guess what? They work with the cutest animals on the planet. So I love what Stacy and Sanjay have done with the organization. I mean, it's completely volunteer run. They actually become these core volunteers to actually move the agenda forward of the different projects that they're working on. So funding one of the um, technology labs in Tanzania and how they got everybody so excited and so passionate just to raise $30,000 over a Thanksgiving holiday and how transparent they are and how they're willing to give up that control. It's not just about the two founders of the organization. They want to be able to give that control to the volunteers that are committed to helping them achieve their mission. And that is something so difficult for a typical nonprofit to do. So to me, that is exciting to see individuals starting movements about what they're passionate about based on their experiences and using a variety of the tools that we talked about in the book. So they use, you know, they have a good email list, they have a great Facebook presence, they even use um, private Facebook groups for organizing, they have public Facebook groups, they um, organize really well on Twitter, and I just think that they're using, and they have great blog posts, and they use all of these channels at their disposal to to do these micro campaigns several times a year, and I just think they're it's so effective. I mean, epic change actually means when an individual makes a tremendous change in their life or changes their local community, that impacts other people. Right. Right. So another person stands up, then another person stands up. Right. So how can epic change actually happen unless you give someone complete authority? That's right. You know, like you have to let that person go and do what they're inspired to do. Right. But you could see like if there was a major national organization who had tried to launch this, and I have seen other organizations, I won't say any names, where they're still controlling it. And, and every little, and they're still the silos, and while they may do some, you know, great crowdfunding campaigns and they're raising money, they're still not as an effective organization because they actually haven't stayed true to that type of, of mission of the giving up that control and letting other people stand up and, and take control of that mission. Um, and, and they have, and that's, that's powerful, and it shows that it can be done and that you don't have to be some multi-million dollar organization to do it. You can be pretty small and grassroots and still build schools in Tanzania. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, because I think what they have as, as their uh, their asset is sincerity. Like they're yeah. completely sincere. And people yeah. get that. When you when you interact with them in the Facebook group or wherever, on Twitter, in person, on the phone, whatever, yeah. the sincerity just comes through. The gratitude. Yeah. All of their donors get handwritten notes from either Stacy or Sanjay or, or the other volunteers. That is something that all nonprofits should be doing at a certain level. You know, one of the, the case studies that we have in Greenpeace is they have, um, this is really interesting, Greenpeace has something called a customer care team. And if you donate $5 or if you donate $5,000, they send you notes, they call you and thank you from the bottom of their hearts for donating money. I recently made a donation, a significant donation, to a very large organization, and all I got was a form email like, thank you, you can use this for like your tax purposes. I never got a phone call, a follow-up email, I got nothing. The only thing I was hit with was more fundraising appeals, and I was like, this is, this is unacceptable. You know what Kivi Leroy Miller does every year? Um, she actually makes a donation to like, I think 10 different nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And then she sees how they respond. 
Right. And I think that's a really good lesson for nonprofits. Like if they want to learn how to do it right, they should yeah. just steal ideas. You know, like yeah. donate five bucks to Greenpeace and see what happens. Yeah. Or maybe donate ten dollars to your own organization and see what that experience is like. Mm -hmm. yep. Did you feel appreciated? Did you, what kind of a response did you get from your own organization? Because it really may surprise you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, wow, our email's broken. Like, yeah, wow, this is really a problem. <laughs>